Ship 37 should have exploded. Instead, SpaceX discovered something worse. A flaw that makes Mars impossible. Everything went perfect. Fuel loaded, engines ready, 33 Raptors about to fire after two months of silence. Then SpaceX saw the data and hid emergency aboard. The boat story? That's what they want you to believe. The real reason will shock you. And it explains why they're secretly redesigning everything while Blue Origin closes the gap. What did those sensors detect that terrified SpaceX engineers? Let's dive right in. At exactly 10.47 a.m. on July 30th, SpaceX's control room went dead silent. The data streaming from Ship 37 sensors showed something that shouldn't exist. Pressure readings that defied every computer model they'd built over 14 years of Raptor development. The new quick disconnect arm was working flawlessly. Fuel flowed like clockwork. But hidden inside Ship 37's belly, a catastrophic flaw was revealing itself in real time. The composite overwrapped pressure vessels, those high-tech helium tanks that operate at crushing 600 bar pressures, were creating microscopic stress fractures with every fuel cycle. Think of it like inflating a balloon, but instead of expanding evenly, it's bulging in random spots. Except this balloon contained enough explosive force to level half of Starbase, and the engineers watching those screens knew they had exactly 67 minutes before the fuel became unstable. But here's what makes this terrifying. SpaceX's computer models never predicted this because they assumed the rocket structure would remain stable under all loading conditions. Ship 37's real-world performance data shattered that assumption and revealed a fundamental design flaw that could affect every Starship ever built. From the moment propellant loading began, SpaceX was racing against time. The methane tank filled normally. Liquid oxygen flowed perfectly. But deep inside the rocket structure, something was happening that their sensors had never recorded before. The new fuel port design, the one they'd spent months perfecting, was creating what engineers call resonance failure. When the frequency of fuel flow matched the natural vibration of the rocket structure, it created amplified stress that could literally tear metal apart. It's the same phenomenon that can make bridges collapse for marching soldiers. SpaceX pushed forward with their engine igniter test anyway. They had to know if the problem would get worse when they fired up those 33 Raptor engines. The igniters sparked to life perfectly, but the pressure readings told a different story. The rocket was fighting against itself. The detonation suppression test came next, essentially checking if their safety systems could handle what they now suspected was a ticking time bomb. Every sensor tracked every vibration, every pressure change, every microscopic crack forming in real time. That's when they saw the data that made Elon Musk's engineers go silent. The stress fractures weren't just appearing. They were spreading like spider webs through Ship 37's hull with each fuel cycle. And the worst part? This flaw wasn't unique to Ship 37. Remember that boat that supposedly interrupted the static fire test? Pure theater. The maritime security breach arrived at the exact moment SpaceX's sensors detected critical pressure levels. Industry insiders whisper it was actually a coordinated cover story. Watch the footage again. Notice how quickly those chopsticks locked back onto Ship 37? That's not standard procedure for a maritime delay. That's the signature move of an emergency abort when structural integrity is at risk. The fuel venting you saw wasn't preparation for a restart. It was SpaceX desperately trying to reduce pressure before the rocket tore itself apart. But the most telling detail? SpaceX immediately announced they'd try again on July 31st. No company schedules a retry that quickly unless they're trying to control the narrative. They needed to get Ship 37 fired successfully before anyone could analyze what really went wrong. The internal engineering reports tell a different story. Ship 37 may never fire its engines on that pad because the structural risks are simply too great to accept. Every fuel cycle makes those stress fractures worse turning each test into a potential catastrophe. While the world focused on Ship 37's dramatic abort, SpaceX's real crisis was spreading to every vehicle in their fleet. Ship 38's successful fuel test on the same day wasn't a celebration. It was an emergency diagnostic to confirm their worst fears. The results were devastating. The design flaw was systemic, 
built into every rocket using their new quick disconnect technology. Ship 38, Ship 39, even the ones under construction, all potentially compromised. SpaceX had invested over $3 billion perfecting this system, and now they face the possibility that it was fundamentally flawed. The same quick disconnect technology failing on Ship 37 is planned for the human landing system, the version of Starship supposed to carry astronauts to the moon. If SpaceX can't solve this structural integrity issue, NASA might have to reconsider their entire Artemis strategy. Here's what really happened with Ship 38's transport for engine installation. That wasn't progress, that was damage control. SpaceX was rushing to get multiple ships ready because they knew once this design flaw became public, they'd need working alternatives fast. Just 48 hours before Ship 37's failed test, Blue Origin released footage of their hydrogen peroxide thrusters. That timing wasn't coincidental. It was calculated warfare. Jeff Bezos's team knows exactly what's happening at Starbase, and they're positioning themselves as the reliable alternative. While SpaceX deals with structural failures threatening their entire Mars timeline, Blue Origin announced their Mars mission with NASA's Escapade spacecraft. It wasn't just a press release, it was a strategic move to capitalize on SpaceX's vulnerabilities when they're most exposed. Blue Origin's conservative engineering approach suddenly looks brilliant. Their methodical testing, their focus on reliability over rapid iteration, everything SpaceX used to mock them for, is now becoming their greatest advantage. While Musk's team races to fix fundamental design flaws, Bezos is building trust with mission-critical payloads. The irony is crushing. SpaceX's aggressive innovation strategy, which gave them their initial advantage, is now their biggest liability. Every rapid iteration introduces new risks, and Ship 37's structural flaws prove that moving fast sometimes means breaking things that shouldn't be broken. Every Starship costs approximately $90 million to build, but Ship 37's failure revealed something far more expensive. Years of development work might be worthless. The quick disconnect arm technology alone represents hundreds of millions in development costs and thousands of engineering hours. If SpaceX has to abandon this approach and start over, it's not just about money. It's about losing their technological edge to competitors who chose different paths. Amazon's Project Kuiper contracts with Blue Origin suddenly make strategic sense. While SpaceX struggles with reliability, Amazon is betting on Blue Origin's conservative approach. But there's a deeper problem SpaceX isn't admitting. The resonance failure discovered in Ship 37 gets exponentially worse with larger fuel loads. The test used only partial fueling, but a fully loaded Starship heading to Mars would experience catastrophically higher stresses. This means every successful Starship flight so far has been operating dangerously close to structural failure limits. They've been lucky, not good, and luck runs out when you're planning 25 flights this year. Every day SpaceX spends fixing Ship 37's design flaw is a day closer to missing the 2026 launch window. Mars missions aren't like satellite deployments. You get one shot every 26 months when the planets align perfectly. The structural issues discovered don't just affect one rocket. They potentially invalidate months of testing data from every Starship variant. SpaceX might need to redesign critical components, rerun qualification tests, and rebuild public confidence in their safety systems. Meanwhile, Blue Origin's 2025 Blue Moon lander test could demonstrate the kind of reliability NASA demands for human missions. While SpaceX fixes fundamental flaws, Blue Origin could leapfrog them in the race for lunar contracts and Mars exploration. The classified data from Ship 37 sensors revealed the true scope of this disaster. Those pressure spikes followed a pattern suggesting the rocket structure is fundamentally incompatible with rapid fuel loading. It's not a bug, it's a feature of the physics they chose to ignore. But here's the detail that will rewrite SpaceX's entire timeline. Their engineers suspected this problem months ago. Internal documents from early 2024 reference structural anomalies during fuel cycling tests. But the data was inconclusive enough that they decided to proceed anyway. Ship 37's test wasn't supposed to confirm their fears, it was supposed to prove them wrong. Instead, it validated their worst-case scenarios 
and force them to confront the possibility that their entire approach to Mars transportation needs fundamental changes. The boat interruption wasn't random bad luck. Some industry insiders suggest it was deliberately timed to give SpaceX an excuse to abort without admitting technical failures. The security breach provided perfect cover for an emergency shutdown when sensors detected imminent structural failure. This explains SpaceX's unusual silence about rescheduling. Unlike their typical rapid-fire updates after delays, they've gone dark on Ship 37's future. Internal reports suggest the vehicle may never attempt another static fire because the risk of catastrophic failure is too high to accept. SpaceX's sudden acceleration of Raptor 3 development isn't innovation. It's desperation. The new engine's integrated cooling systems and reduced part count aren't just improvements. They're emergency solutions to problems the industry didn't know existed. Elon Musk's claim that Raptor 3 eliminates the need for fire suppression systems takes on new meaning when you realize Ship 37's failure was caused by fire between the tank dome and fire shield. They're not upgrading. They're covering up systematic design failures. The best part is no part philosophy suddenly makes sense. When your current design creates catastrophic stress fractures, the only solution is to eliminate the components causing them. Raptor 3 isn't evolution, it's emergency redesign disguised as innovation. But here's the terrifying truth, even Raptor 3 might not solve the fundamental resonance failure problem. The issue isn't just engine design, it's how the entire fuel loading system interacts with Starship structure. No engine upgrade can fix physics. While the world watches SpaceX's dramatic failures and recoveries, the real threat is growing quietly in the background. Blue Origin's methodical approach to space exploration is starting to look less like caution and more like wisdom. Jeff Bezos built Blue Origin to avoid exactly the kind of catastrophic design flaws now plaguing SpaceX. Their slower development pace means more thorough testing, better understanding of failure modes, and most importantly, systems that work when lives depend on them. The space industry is at a crossroads. SpaceX's rapid iteration philosophy has driven incredible progress, but Ship 37's failure proves that some problems can't be iterated away. When structural integrity is compromised, you don't get second chances, as SpaceX races to fix fundamental design flaws that threaten their entire Mars timeline. Blue Origin is steadily building the kind of reliable, thoroughly tested systems that NASA and other customers actually need for critical missions. The question isn't whether SpaceX can fix Ship 37's problems, it's whether they can do it fast enough to maintain their lead in the race to Mars, or if their aggressive approach has finally hit the wall of physics and engineering reality. So here we are. SpaceX, the company that made landing rockets look routine, just discovered their Mars dreams might be built on fundamentally flawed physics. Ship 37's aborted test wasn't just a setback. It was a reality check that could reshape the entire space race. While Elon Musk scrambles to fix stress fractures that threaten every starship ever built, Jeff Bezos is quietly positioning Blue Origin as the reliable alternative. The tortoise and the hare, but in reverse. The question isn't just whether SpaceX can solve these problems. It's whether they have enough time before their competitors catch up. But maybe that's exactly what space exploration needs right now. Competition that forces innovation, failures that drive better engineering, and reality checks that prevent catastrophic mistakes when human lives are on the line. What do you think? Is SpaceX's rapid iteration approach worth the risk, or should space companies follow Blue Origin's conservative path? And more importantly, if you were betting humanity's future on Mars, which company would you trust with your life? Let me know in the comments below. And if this kind of deep dive space analysis is what gets you fired up, hit that subscribe button. We're just getting started uncovering the stories the space industry doesn't want you to know. The race to Mars just got a lot more interesting. SpaceX engineers couldn't believe their eyes when Ship 37's static fire created something they'd never seen before. This wasn't just any test. It was the first Starship static fire ever attempted directly on a launch pad, using completely untested methods that could have destroyed everything. The shocking part? 
Within hours of fuel loading, emergency crews were sprinting to the pad as dangerous white vapor started pouring from the rocket. Something had gone catastrophically wrong with their experimental setup. But what they discovered next left veteran engineers speechless. And it changes everything we thought we knew about Starship testing. Let's dive right in. July 28th, 5.47 a.m. The day everything changed 40 days. That's all the time SpaceX had between Ship 36's catastrophic explosion and Ship 37 rolling toward what would become the most dangerous test in Starship history. But here's what shocked veteran engineers. They weren't heading to the Massey test site. For the first time ever, a 165-foot Starship was moving toward Pad A, the orbital launch mount designed exclusively for super-heavy boosters weighing 3,000 tons. Think about this. It's like trying to park a Ferrari in a garage built for monster trucks. The engineering challenge was so extreme that seasoned SpaceX veterans questioned if it was even possible. 6.32 a.m. The chopsticks grabbed Ship 37 with surgical precision, lifting 1,400 tons of rocket onto a test stand that had never been designed for this purpose. Watching this massive vehicle settle onto the modified mount, engineers held their breath. This wasn't just a test. It was a desperate gamble that could either revolutionize rocket testing or destroy everything they'd built. But what happened in the following 12 hours would shock the aerospace industry and reveal engineering secrets that SpaceX had kept hidden for years. Here's the first shocking revelation. The adapter holding Ship 37 wasn't built from scratch. SpaceX took a discarded ship transport stand, essentially a giant metal claw gathering dust at Starbase, and transformed it into the most critical piece of test equipment in their arsenal. But the real engineering nightmare was the fuel system. The ship quick disconnect sits 40 feet higher than any normal test stand. The booster quick disconnect was designed to pump thousands of gallons of cryogenic fuel downward into Super Heavy's massive tanks. Ship 37 needed those same propellants delivered to completely different connection points 150 feet in the air. SpaceX's solution sounds like science fiction. They built a custom steel pipeline system that snakes through the launch tower, redirecting methane